Right, so whilst Keir Starmer seems to have the words £22 billion black hole stuck on repeat coming out of his lying mouth, Labour MPs have of course en masse voted for a gut-wrenching cut to the winter heating expenditure given universally to the nation's pensioners to try and pay that down apparently. Yet, literally the following day, half of that £1.5 billion saving to try and fill a bit of that black hole in the finances was given away by Keir Starmer. The winter fuel allowance was literally introduced under the Blair government. It was Gordon Brown in 1997 as Chancellor who introduced it. Yet this Labour government is so much further to the right of even that government that they've now elected to scrap it to anyone who doesn't get pension credit, affecting some 10 million pensioners. Starmer is readily compared to Blair, and although Tony Blair still crops up far too regularly to opine on policy matters than is welcome, Starmer is proving to be dramatically worse. He did warn us himself, though, when he said he was going to be Tony Blair on steroids, though. But to cut that money, to endanger the lives of 4,000 more pensioners this winter, to literally give half the cash away, is sick. Especially when you find out what that cash has actually been given away for. Right, so Labour have voted through the cut to the winter fuel allowance, affecting 10 million pensioners this winter. It was always going to pass. Just one currently sitting Labour MP had the balls to vote against Starmer, along with five other Labour MPs who have already been suspended for voting against Starmer previously. The man is a dictator if MPs are going to be constantly punished for putting constituents before party. He's done it twice already in two months now. It's a really bad look. It's completely anti-democratic to carry on like that. Where there have been reports of MPs crying as they went to vote this through, though, odd oh, diddums. They can save their crocodile tears. They chose to put their careers first at the end of the day, not their constituents. Every one of them utterly failed in their first duty as an MP, so Sodom. Then there were the 53 abstainers, of course, in the Labour Party, weren't there, who lacked the courage of their conviction, who did not rebel, they just chickened out of standing by their constituents too. Their own careers, again, first and foremost in their minds. There's a quote attributed to novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky, which sums them up beautifully, which reads... Your worst sin is that you have destroyed and betrayed yourself for nothing. Career came first for you, didn't it? But voters won't forget your cowardice. Shame on you all as well. Some have allegedly said they're keeping their powder dry for later. But if you're keeping your powder dry for something like this, then what are you keeping it dry for? But then there were the MPs who relished it on the Labour benches too. SNP MP Stephen Flynn wrote on Twitter that he saw an unnamed Labour MP do a double fist pump. As they voted, as they voted through the voting lobbies to cut the winter fuel payment, reminiscent of this image of Ian Duncan Smith from 2015, when George Osborne rebranded the minimum wage as the national living wage, even though you still couldn't actually live on it. Then there's this chap, a new MP called Peter Lamb, the Labour MP for Crawley as he is now, who has said if pensioners don't put their heating on this winter, it will be their choice, and that pensioners will benefit from more cash for the NHS than for themselves. But is this money going to the NHS then? Well, we certainly know where some of it's clearly going, and it wasn't there. I'll come on to that in a moment, though. It's supposed to be going towards filling a black hole, after all. Where did the NHS come into this, Peter Lamb? Anyway, there was, of course, massive hypocrisy on show, too. After losing his seat in 2019, Gareth Snell has slithered back into Parliament, representing Stoke-on-Trent Central. But in 2017, when he was running for election, he posted this image reading... If re-elected, I promise to vote against the dementia tax, the cutting of the winter fuel allowance, and commit to protecting the pensions triple lock. He, of course, just voted to cut the winter fuel allowance. Let's not leave Keir Starmer out of this either, who put out a tweet just two years ago, because there is always a tweet. August 2022, reading. Looking ahead to winter is frightening. I've met pensioners who have no idea how they'll heat their homes. Parents who will have to skip meals so their kids can eat. The Tories are too busy fighting each other to notice. Labour has a plan that meets the scale of this crisis. Meets it and makes it worse, it seems, as the two-child benefit cap remains, so parents still choose between feeding their kids or themselves, and pensioners now between heating and eating. People on an income of £12,000 have just had their incomes cut by people on at least £92,000, is another way of looking at all of this. The sheer needlessness of this needs to be put into perspective though because i'm sick of starmer hiding behind that 22 billion pound black hole line already it's every other soundbite it's that number each and every time it sounds like a lot of money 
to all of us. It's an unimaginable sum. And that's half the trouble because it becomes impossible to visualize it. So let's put in perspective a moment so we can appreciate the real size of it in the grand scheme of our economy. And is it really such a devastatingly large sum that it would collapse the economy as has been claimed? Well, the UK spending last year was 1.2 trillion pounds. A trillion is a thousand billion. We're talking about 22 billion. So it basically works out as just 1.83% of the budget last year. If you watched Lucy Powell's car crash interview where she said this cut had to be voted through to pensioners' winter fuel allowance as if the economy depended on it, or if you listen to Jonathan Reynolds say this was a cut that had to be made because Labour had no choice, this is what they were really talking about. 1.83% of the economy. It's a stupidly small sum when put in that, in that way. And this cut to the winter fuel allowance doesn't even touch the sides of filling even that small sum which frankly is money that, given it is such a small amount of the economy, could just be borrowed and wouldn't even make much of a difference to the national debt. The national debt is currently 2.25 trillion. Borrowing this would raise it to just 2.27 trillion. And that's just, if we borrowed it, a wealth tax would fill it and a lot more besides and wouldn't add to the national debt. It's also such a small amount. You can argue it can basically be ignored until growth returns and it would pay itself down over time as growth rises, as we all hope it will. This is the stupidity and the abject cruelty of what Starmer has done. And his cowardly or callous MPs have voted through or refused to take a stand against it. And it's not like it's even actually being used to fill this black hole. That actually this is just an excuse for Starmer to find money to do what he wants to do with money. And that is exactly what is happening, it seems. There's 600 million pounds of this, the day after this cut was voted through, a little under half the money being saved from this callous cut has just been given away now. Starmer and David Lammy have handed £600 million to Volodymyr Zelensky, having already given him £3 billion since coming to power and promising £3 billion a year, every year, for as long as it takes for the war with Russia to finally end. We have a £22 billion black hole that requires cuts to fill, we keep getting told, and yet Starmer just gives even more money away to Ukraine. The day after the cut at that. For as much as you might support the Ukrainian cause, do you want to pay for it at this cost? Have we not already given them enough as well? There's always money for war, isn't there? And goodness knows Starmer really loves posing on the international stage, loves posturing in combat gear. But it also shows that cuts like they've just pushed through don't stop them spending where they want to, still. And that should put this entire debt in the perspective that it needs to be. That every whine and whinge and every cut they say has to be made is their choice. It is not necessity. Not if we're still able to give millions on top of billions away in international aid, regardless of how valid a cause that might be. The money given this time will apparently be used for, and you will laugh, although you should be crying, will be given away to Ukraine to strengthen their economy. Humanitarian assistance to the most vulnerable Ukrainians is being paid for by freezing our pensioners. Restoring access to Ukrainian energy sources is being paid for with the heating money for our pensioners and more besides. Starmer's labour is twisted and cruel beyond any belief. I've never known a government like this. You think every bit as bad as the Tories were, that they could never get worse and they still ended up being able to raise the stakes. But Starmer's Labour have gone in on a really high bar above that. And it's all so he can basically pose as a strong ally of Ukraine. So he can walk in lockstep with the US setting UK foreign policy as they are. Not just here, but elsewhere too. He punishes the people of this country to do it though. First the young, now the old. And come next budget with more cuts, more hardship, more cruelty to come. Remember the spending choices, for goodness sake, bear that £22 billion black hole in the perspective it needs to be held in. Because it really is nothing in the grand scheme of things. And every cut made in the name of filling it is an unnecessary choice. For more on the pathetic showing of Labour MPs defending their elderly constituents, as well as the one MP who showed enough courage to defy Starmer's authoritarianism, you can get all the details on this video recommendation here as you're suggested next watch. Well, I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers, folks.